Hello and welcome back. Um, so, what is my reaction to the Congress's UAP hearing the other day? I put up the uh, entire hearing on my YouTube channel. So I'm assuming if you're watching this, you've probably seen that, whether on my channel or somebody else's, and you might be thinking, <clears throat> what's going on with all these UAPs? There's footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are. We can't explain uh, how they moved, their trajectory. And so, you know, I, th I think that we're st uh, people still take seriously trying to investigate and figure out what that is. Mr. Obama says UFOs were actually one of the first things he asked about after taking office, but he did not say whether he thought UFOs were alien in order. Well, my reaction really is that I think the three witnesses appear to be quite credible. Um, this is this testimony that I've heard before. I suppose maybe the last two years, I've sort of been keeping a bit of an eye on this story. Um, I heard it, I heard about it in an online documentary, um, and then I noticed just as a bit of fun, and then I noticed that uh, Congress was actually looking into this. These claims that these Navy pilots had actually seen unidentified objects. So I, the three witnesses that came forward in Congress, um, as I said, I'm, I'm already aware of most of their testimony already, but I think it was really good, the fact that they're under oath this time, which means that if they're lying, they could potentially go to jail. So, you know, there are stakes. I think what's interesting about it is that the members of Congress, um, not only in, in the ones that that um, were a part of that hearing, but other members of the Senate, Rubio, Gillibrand, so forth. These are people that are making themselves quite public about these hearings and about interviewing these people that have stated that they have seen these anomalous objects. And some of them have said that it is definitely craft. Now, <clears throat> I just find it quite interesting that career politicians would actually put their name to something like this, would even have UFO, UAP anywhere near them if they didn't think there was something credible about this. I mean, these are people that are running for re-election. I mean, some of these people, Rubio, Gillibrand, potentially going to be running for president. Um, it could absolutely ruin their career if if they make it public that they are the the ufo politician you know it could ruin their career i do know that a couple of members in senate have said that they have seen some pictures some testimony and some pictures that the public had not seen and i heard this over a year ago and that's convinced some of them that there is something to this story uh, there's a, a quote by christopher the late christopher hitchens that 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 I do try and use in times like this, you know, it's important to be open minded, but not to be so open that your brain falls out. And I think that that is true in this. Um, it's a fascinating story. Um, <clears throat> there's there's been a lot of um, testimony by other people as well that Congress has actually spoken to. Um, I now believe that Congress is now trying to form this other party now solely to investigate these UAP um, reports. And this part, he will have the ability to subpoena witnesses um, and also get whatever top cl classification they require in order to see the more, um, the more hidden um, information, transcripts, photos, videotapes, whatever it might be. Now... <clears throat> One thing that I do find really interesting, I wanted to, to point out with David Grush, is that I have heard a number of people talk about, well, David Grush, you know, was giving us information, but he wasn't giving us a lot of specifics. He said there were people involved, at different sites, this, that, and the other, but didn't give names, saying he couldn't give it publicly. But I suppose one thing that I've learned is that the fact is that, you know, he's an intelligence worker and he does have confidentiality clauses. And the fact is that if he breaks them, he will go to jail. Um, he will go to jail and potentially spend decades in jail for treason. So I can understand the fact that he doesn't want to give certain specific information in a public, open public hearing. But 
for those who've looked into it, David Grush has actually given all of this information to the Attorney General in the intelligence agency, given all the names, all the places, all the dates, everything that he's heard. He's already given that information. And in fact, it was actually this Attorney General for the Intelligence Department who actually referred him to Congress um, <clears throat> because they thought it was an urgent uh, and a credible case, their language. So this is really interesting stuff. Um, I'm trying to keep a really open mind to it, but there are a number of members of Congress that said that they have seen some photos that the general public have not seen, and that has convinced them that this is not, that there is something out there that these pilots are seeing, that it's not a weather phenomenon, and that it is technology, and it's technology that they can't even imagine. So it's something that's going to continue. I don't think we can put the genie back in the bot and back in the bottle. If it is American tech, then my goodness, they've made some amazing breakthroughs, um, <clears throat> and the world is going to change. If it's not America and it's another country, uh, then depending on the country, that's actually quite frightening because the pilots in Congress said that if they had taken, if if the UAP that they had seen when they were running their test um, flights had actually been aggressive, they said there was nothing that they could do about it because it was just far too advanced. So that is, is actually probably more frightening than the fact that there could be... Um, non-human intelligence but anyway I'm, I'm just this is something i think we're all going to be hearing about at least for another year or so um i believe that the reporter george knapp has from the united states who's been looking into ufos for many years i had heard about a year ago <clears throat> that in the 1990s he'd come across some documents from russia i think they were classified so once the um, end of communism arrived arose, sorry, and the US and uh, Russia were on friendlier terms. There are a lot of scientists and, and military people that were quite open about the UAP, uh, or it was UFO in those days, um, experiences that they've had. And George Knapp presumably had all this classified information from scientists in Russia. And I believe, from what I've heard online, that I think in the last 24 hours, he's actually submitted that work into Congress. So they presumably now have all this classified information or declassified information from Russia during the Cold War about how the Russians actually engaged with some of these objects and how they lost a lot of planes engaging these objects that they thought at the time were American. Um, so, but turns out that they weren't. Anyway, really interesting. Um, I'll be putting a few other videos out soon, but I just wanted to get this get this one out. So I guess the next video I'm going to pop up is just a couple of minutes from one of the senators uh, from the meeting, just talking about something that they had heard. Thanks for watching. Bye. It required my attention. I sought a briefing regarding that episode and brought with me Congressman Burchett and Congresswoman Luna. We asked to see any of the evidence that had been taken by flight crew in this endeavor and to observe any radar signature uh, as long as, to, as well as to meet with the flight crew. We were not afforded access to all of the flight crew. And initially, we were not afforded access to images and to radar. Thereafter, we had a bit of a discussion about how authorities flow in the United States of America, and we did see the image. And we did meet with one member of the flight crew who took the image. The image was of something that uh, I am not able to attach to any human capability, either from the United States or from any of our adversaries. And I'm somewhat informed on the matter, having served on the Armed Services Committee for seven years, having served on the committee that oversees DARPA and advanced technologies for several years. Um, when we spoke with the flight crew, and when he showed us the photo that he'd taken, I asked why the video wasn't engaged, why we didn't have a FLIR system that worked. Here's what he said. They were out on a test mission that day over the Gulf of Mexico. And when you're on a test mission, you're supposed to have clear airspace, not supposed to be anything that shows up. And they saw a sequence 
of four craft in a clear diamond formation for which there is uh, a radar sequence that I and I alone have observed in the United States Congress. One of the pilots goes to check out that diamond formation and sees a large floating, what I can only describe as an orb, again, like I said, not of any human capability that I'm, that I'm aware of. And when he approached, he said that his radar went down, he said that his FLIR system malfunctioned, and that he had to manually take this image um, from one of the lenses, and it was not automatic, automated uh, in collection, as you would typically see in a test mission. So uh, I guess I'll start with Commander Fravor. What, in, how, how should we think about the fact that this craft that was approached by our pilot uh, had the capability of disarming a number of the sensor and collection systems on that craft? Well, I think this goes to that national security side, and you can go back through history of things showing up at certain areas and disabling our capabilities, which is disheartening. And for us, I mean, like I said, it, it completely disabled the radar on the aircraft when it tried to do it, and the only way we could see it is passively, which is how he got that image. So I think that's a, that's a concern on what are these doing, not only how do they operate, but their capabilities inside to do things like this. And, and how should we think about four craft moving in a very clear formation, equidistant from one another, um, in a diamond? In, in all of the phenomenon, perhaps, Mr. Grave, that you've analyzed, um, have we ever seen multiple craft in a, in a single formation? I have one particular case, and that was uh, during the gimbal incident. Um, the recording on the AT FLIR system shows a single object that rotates. Um, you hear the pilots refer to a, a fleet of objects that is not visible on the FLIR system, and, and that was something that I witnessed during the debrief as part of the radar data on the situational awareness page. I would like to add, however, Congressman, uh, there's a small, uh, small bit of uh, uh, anger, I would say, I would feel that those pilots are still uh, facing that difficulty in reporting this topic and they don't have the tools to be able to mitigate this issue. It just goes to show how serious this is and why this is such an important issue for our pilots and for our nation. It was stated explicitly to me by these test pilots that if you have a U of AP experience, the best thing you can do for your career is forget it and not tell anyone because any type of reporting, either above the surface or below the surface, uh, does have a perceived consequence to these people, and that is a culture we must change if we want to get to the truth. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I would observe that perhaps as we, uh, as we move forward from this hearing, there are some obvious next steps. Every person watching this knows that we need to meet with Mr. Grush in a secure compartmentalized facility so that we can get fulsome answers that do not put him in jeopardy and that, and that give us the information we need. Second, I would suggest that the radar images from, um, that were collected of this formation of craft out of Eglin Air Force Base, and specifically the actual image taken by the actual flight crew that we can actually validate um, be provided to the committee, subpoenaed if necessary, um, so that we're able to track how to get this type of reporting and analysis done in a more fulsome way. That would be my recommendation, humbly, as a guest here of the Fine Oversight Committee. I yield back. Ms. Mace. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good morning to our witnesses who are testifying today. I want to thank each of you for being